History attached to that 7-0 result. Manchester United's joint worst loss in club history. Their worst loss in more than 91 years. That was a seven-goal loss in the second division at Wolves. The others, you go way back, also 7-0 against Aston Villa in 1930 and Blackburn in 1926. It all comes up terrible moment in club history just seven days after winning the league cup to end a nearly six-year trophy drought so i watched both of you guys yesterday right after the match and, and the focus was what happened let's turn the page to, to now what it means for manchester united and what you learned yesterday well it, it means that they're not where they think they are not yet um there's no question after this game, the manager's learned a lot about his players. That's three times now, Paul, that this team has been beat by four goals or more, conceded four or more goals in a Premier League game. And they've bounced back in previous games, but this kind of felt different. When, you, when I watched the, the press conference of the manager the day before, talking about when he's asked about the atmosphere at Anfield, a big game, big rivals, he sat there and said, we like it. Uh, my players like it. We're mentally tough. We're strong. We're ready for this sort of competition. Well, they're not. When two or three goals goes in and some of your players give up, and that's, that's, a, that's a strong thing to say, they give up, then they're not there yet. There's lots of steps for this club to take. Granted, there's been progression at the football club. Eric Ten Hag has taken his team from a mess to actually really good, and they've won their first trophy. But when you can see that amount of goals in that manner, that's not good enough. You know, I, I do look back at last weekend. I, I remember the images of Eric, Eric Ten Hag in the tunnel at Wembley after they win the League Cup final, rushing over to see Sir Alex Ferguson and the Manchester United owners, hugs and all that kind of stuff. And I understand the desperation of this club to get back to being the very best, to get into the best team in English football. Well, there's more steps to come. And I think that was, was, was blatantly obvious um, when, there's, when there's certain players that when the, in the very toughest moments go missing, then that's what the manager will learn. Specifically, I'll, I'll, ta I'll talk about Anthony. Mm. When it isn't going well, you need to roll your sleeves up and help your team. Others have done that in Manchester United. Many others have done that. I think the, the captain, Bruno Fernandes, didn't cover himself in glory mm -hmm. throughout this second half period. Uh, defenders, Dallow as well. There's, there's, there's more. I could go on. So still work to do. A bit of a reality check. And this team isn't where they think they are at the moment. What's still on your mind? 7-0. A lot of that. Well said, Musty. I, I think I need to take you inside the mentality of, of some of these teams. And, and there is a reality to that. And... With respect, certain teams can go to Anfield. They know they're not really probably going to get anything from the game. It goes three or four nil. They shut up shop. Two banks of four. The sandwiches are hot. The bus is gassed up. Let's just get out of here not get embarrassed. Okay, we tried. We're, we're against a better team. Manchester United can't do that because of their supporters, because of the rivalry. They have to be seen as fighting. There's a way to do that. They played well in the first half. We agreed on mm. that. Good game of football. Liverpool scored. They go into halftime. Ten Hag clearly was going to make some tactical changes, some little bit of adjustment, get them back. They got hit for a second. Okay, that rocked them a little bit. At that point, every manager will tell you there is a smart way to chase the game. You have to chase the game sometimes. What Ten Hag said after the game is ex completely accurate. His players lost discipline. They clearly talked about what they needed to do to get back in the game. The second goal went in, and they all thought we have to charge around. You saw it, charging out of position, leaving areas open. And, of course, Liverpool was going to exploit that. And the more they opened up to try and chase the game in an ill-disciplined manner, the more times they opened up, and they got scored on. And it became embarrassing. And that is difficult to take. Yeah. And difficult to bounce back from this Yeah. Also, mm. I want to come back here to something you said a moment ago. You mentioned <clears throat> that the manager, Eric Ten Hag, has been, has, hasn't had a lot of messes to clean up, but he has responded well from the start of the season because mm. he has done that, because mm. he has them in third. Does he deserve the benefit of the doubt here? In some ways, yes. And um, I think the, the early one, I remember the Man City one where it was 6-3, I think it was. Yeah. And I remember thinking... Yeah, that's, that's a bad day at the office. But it's almost poor. That was earlier. Yeah. I mean, not that far away, mm. but it felt like the team's going in the right direction. Ah, that's a drop-off. Learn some lessons. Mm. Come back again. They have. They've had a brilliant run. This one just feels a little different where, well, we've seen this twice before and now we're seeing it again. So because of where they are right now, they've won the League Cup, the first trophy that the team could win under the new manager, and the run they've had in the Premier League, and some people saying that they're an outside chance of the Premier League title, this feels more damaging more damaging. Yeah. That being said, I think the fans trust him. I, th I, I trust him, but, but it, like, the steps are needed. The steps needed to get to where they want to be. I, I played against the great Man United team, Paul, and I saw 
flipping neck. Ability, skill, organisation, passion, hunger in every player. Wherever it is, by the way, from Ryan Giggs on the left to David Beckham on the right hand side to Paul Scholes and others, whatever the game situation, they found a way to roll with it and win. This team aren't quite there yet, but again, like, it, they've moved a lot mm. in a short period of time, and I think he will get it right. And, and lastly, talk about Leicester's. Where, where, where was the stat? Give me that stat, stat again about getting hit. Well, it, it, three times the team scored more than four. That's Brentford, Man City, and now Liverpool. Right. Now, what I would say to you is the lesson to be learned is Arsenal, City, Liverpool, over the course of a season, are not getting hit for that mm. many goals. Mm. They're not losing that heavily. And if you want to chase the title, this can happen. Mm. Other side, uh, it's much more positive with Liverpool. You go back about a month ago, we were sitting right here wondering about the concern with Jurgen Klopp's group. Mm. Yeah. They've played five Premier League matches since then. They haven't lost, and they haven't conceded a goal. So while we worry about Manchester United, let's look at the other side and the, the same question. What does this mean moving forward for that side? Well, it means that the, the, the front three, the new front three looks exciting. The future of the attacking side of the team um, it looks really, really good. The midfield in this particular game were fired up and they were charged up, given the nature of it, given Liverpool versus Man United at Anfield. The atmosphere there is incredible. Um, I like Ibrahima Konate. I think he is a central defender. And he's had a lot of injury issues. Him alongside Van Dyke and Trent Alexander-Arnold on the right and Andy Robertson is the best defensive unit. It's just if the, the back four and the midfield three can play as well as that with that amount of energy, mm. the, front, the front players will get you the goals. I think when you talk about the front three, Musty, this, this reminds me of the rhythm that we used to see with the best teams under Jurgen Klopp. The interchanging, you score two, I score two. There's no one selfish, a lot of passing, a lot of goals amongst them. There seems to be that continuity. And when you look at Liverpool, they seem to be, even though they're in fifth, they seem to be in pole position for those Champions League spots. Under Jurgen Klopp, they've never finished outside those Champions League spots. It's the holy grail for Liverpool Football Club. Mm. Hi there, I'm Rebecca Lowe, studio host for NBC's coverage of the Premier League. Don't forget to hit subscribe to watch more videos all season long. For even more Premier League content from original series to live matches, head over to Peacock and be sure to tune in for Premier League mornings every weekend on USA Network and on Peacock. We will see you over there.